akaniambia the first thing vile tuliingia kwa nyumba in our house had nothing has changed oh lord no he came with um muiko so he did it that night the next night and the next one And that one gave me an addiction. But then uh, I got into porn. When Celine met her husband, he warned her that this was not going to end well. But because she came from a failed marriage, she was hoping that this would work. So she tried and believed that it would work. But nothing prepared her for the harrowing experience she was going to experience in this marriage. Welcome to today's episode of my story. My name is Yvonne Kaira and this is Silent Story. First and foremost, karibu sana to this show. Um, I appreciate the fact that you reached out to us seeking to air your story and maybe through that you can get someone to help you uh, beat this battle that you're struggling with currently. So please introduce yourself to us. Okay, I'm Saline Atieno Kech. Uh, commonly known as Salin Vix on social media. Okay. Um, a third born in a family of 13 from Oyugis. Uh -huh. That is in Homer Bay County. Yeah. Yeah. So how was life, you know, growing up and getting you to where you are now? Uh, life was good. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we stayed in Kericho with dad, Nime Someo, in Kericho, uh, primary school, went to Asumbi. So life has not been so bad. Mm -hmm. Though, you know, from that big family, uh, there are those common struggles that everybody goes through, but um, we thank God. Mm. We managed, we did our school, those who are still in school and school, but we are here today. Nice. Yeah. How would you describe your childhood generally? Uh, partly traumatic and uh, partly it was fun. Why traumatic? Uh, traumatic since uh, the things, the faces that uh, I went through, that at that time I didn't know what they were. Mm. So growing up, I was like, they kept coming back, they have been coming back and uh, at that time I think nobody would believe when I said uh, something had happened. And um, yeah, that is the trauma, at least now. But that is the trauma part. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so uh, while uh, I, I told you we were in Kericho with yes. dad, uh, so holidays we used to go home after school was closed so there was this time we went home and uh we used to sleep in one room like all cousins we would sleep in one house and uh maybe the young uncles so there was this time um one of my uncles he actually came on to me and uh, did his thing Gee. and um my siblings saw that I, I was so young so i didn't even know what was happening so the next day when uh, they went to tell dad, it was me who was beaten blue black. Like my dad thought I knew what was happening. So he really beat me. <laughs> Did the perpetrator get any sort no, of punishment? He didn't. The only thing he was told is uh, he should not sleep with us in the same room again. But he didn't. But you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, God is a God of justice. Huh? Mm -hmm. Later on, this guy, uh, he was arrested. He did the same thing to his daughter. His daughter? Yes, yeah, so he's still in jail. Oh. So I just pray that my dad believes what I told him. So how life unfolded for you at that point was betrayal from the people who were supposed to protect yeah, you? Yeah, because I was young. I, I wanted to, I was relying on my parents to know what was supposed mm. to happen. And I wanted them to believe what I was telling them. And I, I only wished they knew that I didn't even know what was happening at that yeah. moment. I wanted them to believe me, but they didn't. So I, I, every moment that I, I think about that guy, I've vis visited him in jail so many times. But Do you every, ever talk about it? Yeah. The and first time I went, mm -hmm. I asked him, why did you do, do what you did? First of all, what did you do to your daughter? Why did you do it and why did you do what you did to me? He was like, um, it's the devil. It is a devil. Mm -hmm. So how did life unfold for you as you continued growing up? Uh, it was fun. It was good. Uh, with that one aside, sure. we, used, we were still in Kericho, finished. I uh, went to Asumbi Girls, a very nice school. And then Dada Kapoteza Kazi. Mm. So I had to go back to the village schools. So I went to the village school. That is where I did my form for. 
but I joined in Form 3. Mm -hmm. So when I joined, there was no money to take me to boarding. So I used to day school from one of the school uh, workers' house. They were close to my mom. So the same thing happened mm -hmm. uh, with her husband. Um, I remember it was a Sunday because we had a biology exam in the afternoon. So we went for the exam. I came back in the evening and the madam was not around. No, your aunt. No, she's not my aunt. She's she was just one of the school workers. Okay, okay. They were just acquaintances with my mama. Mm -hmm. So she was not around. Ilikuwa siku yake ya kupelekewa mahari. So actually the husband had traveled from Nairobi to home. Uh, and I and then I like my hair. So mm. we were with the husband alone yeah. in the house. And that night, when uh, Nalala, you pass through my room to their bedroom. So, yeah, he had his way. And uh, like he, he just threatened that I, I can't scream. And he's a lawyer in Kenya. He threatened Even that. Now? Yes, he is. And you never told us all. I never. This is the first time you're talking about this. I told my mom, but she didn't believe me. So I stopped talking about it. But he knows what he did. Because there was a time we met here in town. And he reminded me of it. How do you feel when someone hurts you and then years later comes back and reminds you of what they did? He, he asked me, did you tell anybody about that? And I was like, what was that? Oh, so it was like, so you enjoyed it, eh? I, I, I've been trying to forget about it because why would I want to keep that in my memory every time? Mm -hmm. But when it reminded me, like, it just came back. Uh -huh. So how has life been ever since that? Um, after the high school, that is when drama started in my life. Yeah. And uh, when it started, it started very funny. Mm -hmm. was to Limaliza from 4 and then December there was on holiday so your holiday uh, we had guests in the village and we were so happy like when guests come around unaambiwa ai salini wewe ndio unaenda kusaidia kupikia wageni wao wanatoka kwenye kunazo eh mm -hmm. so i was so excited the guests came around and i was chosen to be among those who went to prepare meals so kwenda we did what we had to do and they were there for two days. And then the th third day, uh, Mama Kanita, they came actually with Dad, Waka Kapo. Our Kanyambia, um, so our guest of Mekuja, Walikuga, Mekuja, Kutafuta, um, Mke. But uh, I don't know what you're thinking about, but uh, we were talking about you. I was like, I just did my phone for. I am not even ready to settle down. Mm -mm. Other results has Jakuja. No, who can you tell me what I'm February, January, Mushu? Yeah. So I told them, I'm not even ready to settle down. So give me time. And they're like, no. That's a hapa. I want a job with to go to Naishi. You need uh, someone to take you to college. And uh, your time, the guests who came, they were young guys. So I can be a so this is so and so. I will keep it. Uh, and uh, the father is rich, so, so, mm -hmm. Akosawa, and he has promised to take you to a nursing school in Tanzania. So the, the name nursing school in Tanzania changed everything so, for me. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. Finally, uh, there were hopes. I was seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Because um, after that, I did lose job. Life was so tough. Eh? So mom was at uh, the forefront and dad I think hakuwa na choice akasema ni sawa so I'm, I'm supporting this so this guy they went back and they were from Nakuru and they went back to Nakuru and uh, they started planning of how I was going to uh, join them in Nakuru so uh, uh, that was December I remember I traveled 31st of December because I was so excited I was going to Vuka Mwaka mm -hmm. on the other side so we traveled, I traveled early to my door, Nika Songa, I was so smart. I traveled on 31st, first time out of the village yeah. after Kutoka Kericho. Nika Ingia, he was there waiting for me, Kwa stage, drove me to his place. And we started living, husband and wife. Mm. 
So we left uh, December, January. Then I realized this guy is an alcoholic, a serious, serious alcoholic. I didn't have a problem with the alcohol part because the father alikuwa na provide ya kila kitu. Na ni last born, alikuwa last born. So anything, his kazi ilikuwa sema tu, ita kufuata. We really enjoyed that bit until um, uh, the father started realizing that uh, I come from a humble background and uh, I am not their class. So it was so chaotic. He would anytime he would pass next to my house. We were living in the same compound, yeah. so he would pass there and he would be like, "Nyarko uh, tieno, this do this do this." Like I would do some weird, weird jobs. I would, <laughs> okay, I would really do some weird things in that house. What well, are some of the weirdest things you've done? Uh, wash his. Uh, Clothes. Okay. Clothes, clothes. Clothes, so, clothes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would do that and and I would be like, unajua kuli mina kusaidia? Kuzata kuinu, I'm sending money. So you have to be here and do everything for us. Like, I, I still am trying to comprehend what he was doing. Because me, I don't mind, I don't want to na ngoja time ya kuingia my nursing school so ninaweza persevere ulikuwa unamuuliza when that's going to happen yes mm-hmm. nilikuwa nauliza but through the sun of course okay. and i think the sun alikuwa anatoa na mogopa so the angeenda kumuuliza ambiwe mwambie ngoja kwanza ataingia so angekuja niambie akidogo tu mm-hmm. ataingia that was january february and then i i think it was too soon to ask cuz i just joined them in december yeah. So I was trying to be patient but uh, the patience ran out in March so I oh. got tired na nikatoka nikarudi nyumbani uh, in March in um, some alafu ama chikisha mama karela is pregnant I didn't oh. know I was expecting I as like, and she was like you cannot stay here while you are expectant so you have to go back to your marriage to your marriage mm-hmm. Mimi huyo nikafunga virago. I went back. I was like acha nipate mtu ya hope things will be better. Maybe ni mtoto atafanya tukue mm. sawa. Nikapata uh, nikaenda tukakaa. I got my baby in September of uh, 2020 2012. Ah uh, nikampata then things ikizikajifanya ziko sawa kidogo but father in law drama started and it got worse cuz he would pass he would be shouting he would be insulting me na he, since ata with the mother in law alikuwa na hata kumwambia anything in front of everybody mm. so who am i who are you? Mm. so he would say anything kuna siku nimeenda hapo kwake nikiwa serve chai huyo mtu ali aliniongelesha i started crying He stood up. Akaanza unalia nini? Hata bado sija kuanzia na ushaanza kulia. Alinishika like violently. My husband was seated and no one questions him. No, nobody. This man is respected. He is a respected man. Even now I know he's so respected because he, he is uh, into politics. Mm. So he's so respected. Hata watu wakimwona mahali ro mheshimiwa mheshimiwa so so nobody would even believe ukiambia mtu anyeze na watu wa ndani alikuwa anga simba kwa nyumba mm. what he says it's final it's final akakushika so, mashati akanishika mm. i was i was looking at the guy who is supposed to be my husband thinking that anafaa kusaidia we have a child the child is so young so like how how are you sitting there and your dad is doing this ah the dad anishika mashati I'm going to make your life a living hell. Here. It's going to be a living hell. And uh, if you you thought that, that there is a school coming, there's no school coming. And now we have a child. Sasa sasa hizo kama umefukuzwa nyumbani you're pregnant. Sasa utarudi na mtoto. I started counting how my miserable 
days and years will be like so hiyo time ah, ah, ningefunga mtoto kwa kwa mgongo naenda mtoni kuchota maji na kuja na yeye kwa mgongo bado na chanja kuni na pasua kuni na lima shamba there was a shamba hapo nilikuwa na lima shamba i used to work and even i got a c plus wow. in kcc when results came i mm. got a c plus and uh, shule to i was the best girl because i went to a mixed school for masumbi i was the best girl mm. but this is what i was doing so when i went to ask about the college thing anambia college i told you there's no college nitakufungulia mahali hapa uzange makao we see what can happen things were not going how we are talked yeah. na sasa hizo I, i had no access to money they made sure kama ni chakula ni tunataka they bring the, the food, food so there was no access to any funds hata hizo chama wasichana wanaingia mm-hmm. i could not i had no money i had no phone <laughs> i was just there waiting on them mm. but uh, i think siku ikifika ya kutoka unatoka no matter what so this particular day i i was just fed up i had overworked myself i had cleaned messes from my husband i had done everything my father in law wanted i was at the end mm. nikasema it's the day natoka whatever i'll be going with this child sijui but nitatoka So ni, they had gone to work who anaenda kazi pamoja. So yes kwa kwa menda kazi. I just took took clothes of mine. I took my baby. I didn't even have at decent clothes when I said that we ni bibi ya mtoto wa mheshimiwa. Mm. No. I just took what I could and I started walking in the streets of Nakuru. I was looking for where to go. To. And then I got an old friend kwa baraba. It was God. I met a very old friend we are not seen each other for long kwa barabara akaniuliza akaniambia na what do you want to do nikamwambia mimi I just want somewhere na zaka ni tafute kazi nifanye nipate job niende nyumbani nikipata pesa mm-hmm. akanichukua akanipeleka kwa nyumba nyingine hapo ya mabati akanipe gunia cuz that I was not well off so nikwenda la kwa gunia na my daughter ile makani likataa kuuza ndio sasa nilikuwa nauza hapo eh mm-hmm. alinitafutia some uh, like gunia mm-hmm. kanambia uza uza hii you can get man hiyo makaa nilikuwa nauza hapo i sold it for two months and then nikapata pesa i went back home mm-hmm. and i went back home and told my mom mom i have nowhere else to go this is home so if you get me out of home there's no where else i'll go I've gone through what I've gone through but I have learned. Yeah. And uh I'm, I want to start. Just give me a chance to tafuta hata kazi za hizi BOG PTA teaching mm-hmm. nifanye. She was not happy, my dad was not happy. I was an embarrassment. I was an, an embarrassment because they had hopes in me. Ukishaolewa kwa tajiri uh, definitely wao wow, ni tajiri mm-hmm. because pesa inafaa kwa ina flow. So they were like okay enda kwa auntie so and so uh, wone kama utapata kazi uko but huko nyumbani hautaka and that is how I went to my aunt in uh, Migori county hapo ndo nikapata kazi sasa hizo ni kwa mtoto mtoto an, anasumbuana na ugonjwa but um nikapata kazi ya shule i used hmm. to be paid 1500 a month a month sasa <laughs> hizo shule au ruhusi uko na mtoto So you need to get someone to take care of the child. Oh, mtu anataka 500 a month. A month. So half your salary, okay. More than <laughs> so after umepata wow. pesa yako unampe 500. Na unabaki na hii thao. Auntie anataka at least usaidie kwa nyumba. Na mtoto ndio huyu. Tuko hiyo. Tuko na survive for quite a while until um who the lady who was taking care of the child uh, alikuwa na um, this kifafa until siku alianguka na mtoto kwa barabara on, on her way akimleta kwangu she was crying so akanguka kati kati ya barabara na mtoto kwa mgongo ni bahati tu there was someone passing aka aka 
realize ni mtoto wangu akakuja shule akaniita and took the child na hivyo ndio ndio tayo kazi I like it's not worth it yeah. what if something happened because of one of the so ni liacha hiyo kazi nikaka kwa auntie and the burden nikaendelea cuz uko na mtoto mm-hmm. this is someone pia kuna family yake akanambia you need to get a job just look for something hata kama ni mali utaruhusiwa kukaa na mtoto hata kama ni kufanyia mtu kazi so nikapa kibahati tu i think ni Mungu pia <laughs> nikapata kazi shule nyingine sasa i was being paid 4500 nice. lakini unalipwa in bits unaweza pawa 500 ungoje tena 2 weeks upewe 1000 <laughs> that is for one man hapo mm-hmm. nikapata msichana mwingine wa kusaidia na mtoto ya kwa nataka thao uh, but at least we manage and then uh, there's just a time mtoto aligonjeka and uh, nilipigiwa simu kunikiwa shule eti mtoto amekufa she she was stiff when i got there walipigia the headmistress mrs ochego whatever she is mm. so she didn't know how to come and tell me that my child is dead she is not dead yeah. so alipigiwa kambiwa amia madam sali mtoto wake amepass she is not breathing akuje tone vile tunapeleka mochari mrs ochen came to me akanambia madam sali mtoto uliacha aje akambia ani mocha poa hakuwa mgonjwa atia hapana Okay sasa aunt amepiga amesema uende nyumbani kidogo uh, I think mtoto analia sana and one uh, I left school just even to mm-hmm. nikatoka nikaenda to the walking distance kufika napata people sobbing the lady mwenye analinda mtoto analia I'm like what has happened <laughs> I hope it is not my child what has happened akakuja kwangu akaniambia mama Vicky mimi hata sijini nilifanyika but alikuwa analala uh, kwenda kumuona nikapata hayuko i don't know what happened for the next few seconds i was not existing i went and took the child nikamwambia wewe victoria wake up stop this joke that you're doing with me just wake up the you know what we have been through yeah. i cannot be suffering here if you want to live you better wake up i i cried and she coughed i cried and victoria woke up she coughed and she was up and that day i called mrs ochen kambia send me a thousand shillings i'm going back home to my mom So she sent me money. Yeah. I went back to the village. I took my baby to the, my mom. I said, "Mom, I have realized I cannot take care of her alone. Can I go Let me get money. Let me go out there and work." Nikamwacha nyumbani. I left after two days. She was fine. So what she wasn't even sick. What had caused that? I know she was still cold. Actually, era mi vile nilimshika, she was cold. She was cold and stiff. I don't know. I think she was dead. I I up to now I still believe she was dead. And God had your prayer. Yeah. I told that girl you better wake up. And uh two weeks after Melody, she was sick, seriously sick. She had turned pale yellow. She was not eating anything. Mm. Nothing. She was alikonga tu so nika resign tena hapo job. Nika rudi nyumbani. Kukana eh sasa when I went nikapata ata i think alikuwa mbaki tu castring kidogo tu hivi nikamchukua usi bila lidungwa hiyo sindano ya ku a drip akafungua mdomo kulia she came back after 10 minutes you know the way the kid mtoto ulia so anaenda alafu mm-hmm. anarudi this one came back after 10 minutes sababu alidungwa sindano hakuwa na nguvu ya kulia Uwe. so hapo ndio nikarealize the life the living situation at home like when in favor akwa na kula vizuri na akwa na kula cuz i wasn't around so i decided that is the last time na acha mtoto anywhere na anybody wherever i will be there with your child atakuwa hapo mm. nikakaa nyumbani nikakaa that was 2012 2013 and then 
another opening came through. Mhm. nikapigiwa simu na my auntie alikuwa anga the husband used to work in Nairobi. Sasa yeye alikuwa anga nyumbani. Kanipigia kaniambia asali niko nyumbani. Kasema ati kuna kazi imetokea mahali. Uh, I would like us to, to talk about it. So when are you free and uh, so that we meet and talk. Kambia any time miss I am home. Cuz kazi na pata ni za 1500 za 500 azini saidi. So she came home akaniambia kuna kazi iko Nairobi and uh, you going to get 78k mm. na utaishi na boss wako na amekubali wewe na mtoto. Allah That was a nice arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was and I was so happy that I was coming to Nairobi for mm-hmm. the first time and I was moving with my child. So that was something I, I think I was looking forward to. Niambia hiyo kazi inaenda. Mwambie I'm ready ni fair sina atume fair. So akasema don't worry I will personally take you to ah. her. So uh, I told my dad. Mwambie kuna kazi imetokea Nairobi and I have to go. Na nana na mtoi. He was happy at least kuna kazi. When I told my mom, my mom told me, yeah, I know. Aunt alikuwa ashaniambia about your kazi. Mm-hmm. So it was something that was working. So tukakuja Nairobi. Tukakuja and tukaenda kwa nyumba ya boss. Um akaniambia this is madam so and so and she's going to be a boss. So mjuane. Mm-hmm. That was good. Nikaingia na mtoto. Toka ushago. Ah, tukaka. Tukaka uh, that night I was introduced to the family members. And then uh, now the next day we were still there. She had the house up. I was there so after a week I was like eh, ile kazi si wewe kazi. Akaniambia huko umeambiwa I talked to mom and your auntie. I told them to help me get a wife for my son and uh, they brought me you and they want some I'm told I was okay with that so this is now your potential mother in law yes this is my potential mother in law so where is the son had you met yes, him yes i okay. had uh-huh. what kind of a man was he uh, he was a silent man but uh, what i realized first is uh, alikuwa ana smoke like chain smoke So at my first impression kwake haikuwa like ah, tunaweza zoana na huu mtu mm-hmm. now i don't like people who smoke so vile nambua so and so and you are talking your husband I was like really another one arranged marriage the second time <laughs> another arranged marriage i was like kwani what is wrong with mom is it so hard aniambie vitu kama hizi like at least the first one aliambia but it was still mm-hmm. she had known before me so um tukaka but this guy vile aliambiwa huyu ni Salina and uh, I'm a letter and this one so I'm letter for you akasema mom I, I don't want a wife get that girl back to wherever bush umemtoa oh. i don't want a wife na he told me he looked me direct kwa macha kaniambia ah uh, mrembo you better go back from where you came from because you will not like it it won't be fun now this is not the first time i'm hearing something like this mm-hmm. in life so uh, uh, but uh, like mother in law uh, what's happening kaniambia he will come around ah anaongea tu hivyo lakini he will just come around okay he never he never came around mm-hmm. uh, so my ma- the mother in law or the mama alikuwa na two houses so we were supposed to live in one of the houses and then she lived in the other one so for the one week the first one or two weeks the yeah, two weeks i was there nilikuwa naishi na mother in law na lala kwake the son alikuwa naishi the other house mm-hmm. how like so which kind of marriage is this Okay sasa ndio hii nishajipata hapa. So which kind of marriage is this? Afu there is this thing with us ladies. Ukishapata mtoto hii inafika point you just feel like whatever comes around. Na make do too. Yeah. Mm. So I was like sasa niko na mtoto hii na hao wamekubali kuchukua na mtoto hii and uh, they are not so bad they are doing well. 
Sasa huyu mtu ataka around ni but this guy never came around. Siku niliambiwa nitoke sasa kwa mom niende niishi na ye. He never gave me peace. He would come home drunk and uh, beat me up. Uh, I remember there was this time nilikuwa nafua downstairs na nikaacha mtoto amelala na nika there was a lady, a lady alikuwa kwa nyumba this girl akakuja kwangu kama analia ati mama viki hebu kuja kuja uone nini naendelea kwa kwa kuz uh, baba viki ni kama hayuko poa so kufika nikapata mtoto wako kwa bed this guy yako na ni kama ana undress. The guy is undressing. Yes, na mtoto sasa hizo asha undressiwa. So nikaenda tu nika grab mtoto from the bed. Aka vuta longi, mimi nikatoka. My plan was to get out of this house. Kufika kwa stairs alinifuata. Akachukua mtoto, akanirusha kwa stairs nikaanguka pale chini akakuja akanikanyaga na akanishinga akanishika shingo like ananinyonga my target was just one to get this child but i can't he he will head energy unajua mtu anatumia drugs because mm. sijui ni gani hapo anatumia what so akachukua uh, mtoto akarudi naye kwa nyumba so i had to go get help because mm. mama hakuwa around nikaenda kwa madha mwingine hapo alikuwa anapika nikamwambia uh, baba viki amechukua mtoto and uh, i don't know his intention but alikuwa ame undress so find a way and get this child and i was i had marks like alikuwa mikono yake ilikuwa imeingia huko so i was even bleeding so this lady akanambia go to my house let me go get your child me i went and after almost that means alikuja na mtoto and I was like sasa in maisha gani and anything happened to the child i don't know if i would have forgiven myself being that oh. i i i was from the same experience before yeah but nothing happened no nothing i want to believe nothing happened she was young she was barely two years she couldn't tell me of course she couldn't na sasa you know i found her undressed and i found this guy undressed I up to, up to date I'm still praying nothing happened to that to my child. Okay. So I went to tell um mom. I can be a uh, just keep quiet I'll talk to him. Yeah. Na vitu zitakuwa sawa. Na even my kid this guy to me she na he. We never lived like husband and wife. He never touched me. All those yes. yes. How many years that was that was one year down the line already. That was one year. He never touched me. He kept telling me, "Mimi sikutaki. Na if you want me to touch you, then utanipe nyuma." What? Yeah. So he never touched me. So I went to the sitting room, another bedroom. And I would keep complaining kwa mama yake. Mama yake akanambia, "Sasa wewe ah uh, itabidi umeishi kama widow." because uh, we have a name here also to protect mm. but if you want kids you can get a boyfriend this is your mother yes. encouraging you to cheat uh-huh. on her son the thing was yeah kwa ka cheat the thing was you are here ah. people know now this is your husband mm. so we have to maintain this family thing eh? and uh, i'm so lucky i've been meeting very fortunate people on oh this journey Lord. this mother in law was a big big mama she is a big mama mm-hmm. she is a lecturer where so there was a name to protect mm-hmm. but with the protection of, of, of this name uh, i've had to endure i protected that name for two years where i got cuts kwa na kato if you see these ones are kama hii mm-hmm. ni kato na kachupa uh, apa chupa ilipita uh i had to endure to keep this name and then i got a job and i nikajambia sasa 
I think I need to make a plan with my life. I don't have another child. Sina kitu tanya touch na huyo mtu. I will leave but I'll tell them I'm leaving. Before I even planned to leave, they can be one apelekwa rehab. So I was like, "Oh god, thank you." Because at you least it's going now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was so happy ali pelekwa rehab. Ah, uh, kaka rehab apa Madare for two weeks. I used to visit him. So happy because at least I'm coming back to peace in the house. Yes. Akahepa. Akahepa rehab. One Saturday morning na panga kwenda church amefika. Oh. The tension that I had years when I was even the mom was tense. But things had to happen. Aksha kuja utamtoa. So tukaka bado the toxic the toxic thing is going on. He would beat the mom. He would beat the dad. He would beat me up. Until kuna siku saka shikwa akapelekwa rehab in Nyanza. So at least hapo alika alika hapo rehab for a while hadi I will I was happy at least I'm change ni kwa mtembelea lakini mm-hmm. nimetembelea huo mtu wake <laughs> Is I was there the supporting wife mm-hmm. the understanding daughter in law So I used to go hapo rehab na mtembelea hadi kafika time anafaa kutoka nikaenda tukabatizwa pamoja oh. we are starting a new life thank you jesus <laughs> <laughs> so tukakuja Nairobi na yeye after amebatizwa. Kukuja. Akaniambia the first thing vile tuliingia kwa nyumba in our house. I did nothing has changed. Oh lord no. Yes. I know we nothing has changed. And nothing changed. I actually think it got worse. This guy alirudi kwa drugs kama ni kama hajawaenda rehab umtu alikuwa anakuja anachukua vitu nimenunua kwa nyumba anauza glasses nini anauza for for pombe yeah. akachukua mtoto akaenda na yeye kwa pombe au when i went there to get him to i think that got him so mad because nakumbuka hiyo usiku when i went and got that child and yali kuja nyumbani kama ame relapse You know, there are those faces. Yeah. So alikuwa amelapse. Akakuja. Aka akachukua nguo zangu zenye kwa mbeba tu akazilarua mara moja. Akanipush kwa bed. He came with um Mwiko. Mwiko ya kusonga ugadi. Mhm. So he did it that night, the next night and the next one. Oh. It, it, it was just so dramatic. And that one gave me an addiction that I've had to fight. We I was protecting her name. Yeah. And I wanted to do anything to protect this name for them. And I had a child. And this was a second marriage. Yeah. So even the idea of going back home sasa haikuwa. And after what he had done, who would want to marry me? Cuz in my mind that you are men would tell eh uh, what has happened or something. <sighs> so nilisema nitaka na yeye cuz hata the mom hata niamini because every time we meenda kwake kumu experience anything the the things she would tell me is live like a widow get a boyfriend so like that it was in, though let me say she tried alimpeleka rehab mm. so at least uh, i don't blame her for anything but she knew this guy never wanted me from the onset so even that is how i started having this addiction from that cuz niko na jambia sasa childhood someone raped me in a high school it happened and then now in marriage now someone is doing this with an object or is it that i'm not worth to 
maybe get a man or find one or I'm a heavy Indian so in fact, I don't know what just drew me but then uh, I got into porn seriously got into it na maki sasa hizo nishapata kazi mhm so and iko na mtoto huyo mkubwa tu but I was so much into it any time that i had that was free time i was on my phone he even brought uh kitambo zilikuwa the cd so i let hang us he had a lot of them and that is what he used to have when he used to he would never touch me he would watch uh-huh. those things so uko kwa room unasikia what's going on so sasa ni mimi nikaingia kuzi watch nilikuwa na ziwe na kesha even the whole night kesha niko job but i'm watching it the whole night i am getting things to do and and uh, finish up the age how did that marriage end and uh i was confirmed mm-hmm. at work i was from contract to permanent sasa that was in may mm-hmm. so on 1st june i moved out i i say let me go start another life on my own with my child so ni katoka na alinisikiza alikuwa kijo unaenda unamwacha eh, nilimwambia he packed my things and got some cocktail for me na akanipeleka even to my new house because mm. i told the mom i need a break let me just take a break when things get better i'll come mm-hmm. back. back so he took me so vile nilitoka hivyo i told myself nilijichuna akasema kai you better just see what to do cuz if you go back there to do so that's how i left nikaenda kwanza kuishi uh, on my own na mtoi and hata hivyo kwenda kuishi on my own na niko na mtoto na mtoto ni mdogo ajaanza shule pia was something else mm-hmm. but i was determined tenda kazi nita mtafutia shule aende hata niendange kazi but i was still battling the same addiction yeah the same addiction aso na yeye huko sina tv so kama sina tv natumia uh, simu oh god i i was doing it how bad was it it was bad to an extent na isa ka kwa kazi and i'm doing something hata kazini yeah and uh, you tell me you can make confirmed but it was that bad but i used to pray over it that god get me out of this and then i didn't want to be next to a man mm-hmm. i didn't want a man i was feeling like i think this is enough i, I have a child and now this is the life i want to live kama naweza ji fanyia such i'm i'm just yeah, okay. okay and i don't know it, this thing it's like it's spiritual <laughs> it is spiritual actually. yeah it yeah. is eh? so cuz kuna times unalala and then something just comes up and you feel like the urge na come alafu sijui na kuaje but una enjoy some weird moments in Aisha kinda you have a husband like a spiritual husband yes ninasema in a class spiritual cuz I, i don't know how but una, una feel the urge iko and then something is happening and then you're good were you scared of what was happening mm-hmm. at that time i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't then i really wanted to get out of it but yeah. i was enjoying uh, the moment i had stayed two years uh, with the man in the house there was nothing mm-hmm. so i think I, i wasn't scared i just was hoping that i would get out of it yeah i was just hoping i would but yata niki hope ni kwa zile za but this is the life mm-hmm. so you're torn yeah. between the guilt and well i'm i'm good you're okay i'm okay i, I just was eating me that i have a child hapa and uh, she might be seeing what is happening are you still struggling with the same thing now uh, i can't really say but what has happened from that struggle is i've met people along the way mm-hmm. very good people eh? 
but nimona awani they are not what i'm looking for so i think it's because of that and uh even with them i i was still not sat- i've not been satisfied on what is it that i'm really looking for mm-hmm. so this struggle ni kanisa inasaidia i have nimepewa duties kanisani hapa nyuma very big duties that needed me to be there and then uh, i also was a mom so i've had to kind of tone down on it haishi completely but you tone down on it mm-hmm. yeah. what is the one thing you would like seeing changing in your life in terms of the addiction and basically just your life generally uh, the addiction someone should come through and help. Okay. I, I need to talk to someone professional about yeah. it. Because as much as na feature eco. I'm struggling with it kidogo kidogo but eco and in my life um I feel men up to date. Mm. But I, I know so one time eh, someone good because accident as <laughs> mm-hmm. a <laughs> money like me i just want to get through with this did you Even ever get into another relationship after that yes i did and how did it go oh no it was drama <laughs> <laughs> this time was the drama coming from you or from ah, the drama was from him okay or oh, me no him <laughs> because we, it was covid time okay. and uh, i met this guy kanza kujuana we moved in together and then apparently anatuma his nude to another lady is side chatting other girls he was working from home mimi naenda kazini nikirudi nikiangalia laptop kwa sana yacha hapo he was doing that and this guy like alikuwa tu alikuwa tu he wasn't even like into me ara si jina get to me Mm-hmm. So he was sighting girls. Na akwa na ogopa ati niko. Mhm. Hakuna cha kuficha. Na hakuna kuficha. Kwa hiyo time I was expecting a second baby. Oh, with him? Yeah. With him. So na alisema uh tarehe hazi hajasabiki pole like he can't be. Something is not adding up. Something so. is not adding up. Mhm. At that time I was already pa money so I had a house somewhere else. Like I'm being so funny here. Let me just go back home. Cuz in my mind I was like so you're going to be a single mom of two. But this guy he took me through her latter year. I almost miscarried twice. I went to the hospital admitted he never visited at a school moja. Mm-hmm. Manika nika moto I will live and I will live to fight so ni mtoto tu alikuja na zake mm-hmm. there were complications after the two almost the miscarriages that mm-hmm. almost happened ada siku ya kujifungua things were not fine I almost died and he, and actually eh nilimona 6 hours after nimpata cuz This was just not fine. But this guy never came. Hapo ituma anything. And this has been your life now because then mm-hmm. that didn't work. It didn't That's work. Mm-hmm. Na nikawacha, nikajiambia sasa mimi na relationship sasa tumeachana. Uh, let me take care of these kids which I have been trying mm-hmm. and uh, I'm taking care of my kids. My mom who is also very sick nowadays and the whole family taking care of the whole of it and um we were to uh, maneuver and uh, surprisingly you see the place we are in right now mm-hmm. this is this one was on my house i moved here on sunday this sunday yes nilifukuzwa nyumbani nilikuwa kwani uh lambda na kama choka it has been a struggle okay. with the sick child uh, my young daughter has been in and out of hospital inatafutwa kitu inamfanya bado haipatikani mm-hmm. sana but mara ni spine mara 
some infections. So we've been in and out of hospital. So I have not, I hadn't been able to pay right. rent for January and now February and London, I think I'll come in Choka. Because every time I can pay excuses, I'm late, late, late. Hmm. So I'll be on Saturday, Sunday, and I'll talk. So and I was like, hey, can't. So, so, now you were supposed to come, what will happen? But, but I, I moved in with my brother until someone gave me this house. I've mm -hmm. not paid for it. Someone gave us this house. So life has yes, been a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And Sikwizi, uh, everything that happened in the past in Okuja, they are really coming back to haunt me. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like um, the black ship because at times even my siblings don't talk to me, even those that I support. Everybody feels like I'm the, the villain in this story and uh, that I deserve what I'm going through. You don't deserve this. First of all, I need to clarify that. Mm -hmm. You were a victim of circumstances since you were a small child. And in my opinion, the things that you faced and the betrayals that you went through growing up are somehow contributing to the situation you're in right now. It's not your fault. You do need help though. Mm -hmm. And from the Tuko family, we organize counseling sessions with some of our professionals who've volunteered to work with some of our guests. And I'll give your contact to them with your permission. Mm -hmm. And I can walk you through this, through this journey. The second thing I can promise you is that I will link you up with a lady I have interviewed before who has struggled with the same addictions that you have struggled with and currently struggling with. She overcame it and I believe you can too. So she'll take you through this journey and help you overcome it and you know become whole again because your two children need you. You cannot pour from an empty cup so you need to have a complete you to be able to be present for your children. Is that what you want? Yes, that's what I want. <laughs> but you want, uh, yes. you see, in December, mm -hmm. I, I was committed to say, No. I, I did. I took my young child eh, to Canada. There's a, a railway line up. Look at my fika, I'm sure, because uh, I thought this. Uh, mm -hmm. Mom had surgery in December in and out of hospital and then there were issues at work yeah. and I was feeling like all these things so well, they were I took the chair to Canada Kwa, Kwa Iyo railway line I was waiting for the next train I saw it coming and when the child saw it coming she started crying she was wailing and there's someone who came there and I said I'm going to go and I'm going to go and that was the first attempt. So I also need help with this because yes. even last week, something else almost happened. But um, maybe the whole family get quite men. I am not so proud when I'm saying this thing. Eh? I can, if they keep coming, I don't know what will happen. I, am, I don't want to be an irresponsible mom. And I don't want to end the lives of my children soon. I can have it to Zina Negonga Mingi. And Kuna Times Naskia to Nimi Choka. Kamai Sunday, when I was looking for a house and that I needed to move out, I was so tired. My heart stopped beating. I had to sit down. Those who were helping me while in Yaka Tonika Mahali, Nikwa Nimi Choka. So everything just comes back and Ali, I feel like maybe single to kwa hizo marriages. You'd re I'd rather stay in a, a bad one mm -hmm. than nitoke then a struggle. Ni struggle and then nothing I can do about it. So I need that as the counseling happens. Yeah. Someone who can get me out of those thoughts because they are recurring. And someone who can help me forget the scars. <laughs> I know they, they don't just leave. It's true. But at least you can make peace with your story. Ah. I, I will can. help you get in touch with um, a counseling psychologist and someone to guide you with addiction.
that I know they are willing to work this journey with you. But how can people reach you and help you? Uh, through my phone number, sure. 720 512 583. Mm -hmm. That's my number, Salim. Salim. Salim, why is it important for you to talk about these struggles? Knowing that some people out there will attack you, they will, some will encourage you, some will pray with you, but there are those people also who will use this to crucify you. Why did you choose to speak up? Because uh, the silence that I've been practicing, yeah. they keep piling everything up in me. Mm. And I, I'm growing up to be a very angry mom, a bitter woman, and it's not helping. I need, if there's someone in my situation out there or who has gone through the same, they can help me, I can help them. Mm -hmm. And I also need to heal. Okay. I need to start this healing journey. Toko family, I know you're listening to this story and wondering how maybe you can help these guests. We will of course share her number or her contact information that she's comfortable sharing with you. You can reach out to her and comfort her, encourage her, pray with her, help her beat all these struggles that she's facing. Help her overcome these challenges and we will forever, ever, ever be grateful to you. And thank you so much for staying with us. Till the end of the show, my name is Yvonne Kawira. And until next time, keep it cool.